hurts. Last week, by His Grace, we started uh, the sermon on Are We Keeping God's Covenant? And uh, the fact is that we try to identify some of the covenants that uh, God has already set for us. And uh, we mentioned God's covenant with uh, Father Adam. And uh, we also know that uh, he made it with uh, Father Abraham. And he continued uh, with Father Noah. And uh, we know the covenant and we all see it in the sky uh, but there's so much that God has said as part of his uh, covenant and the covenant is that it's an agreement it's an oath it's a, uh, a solemn um, declaration that allows God uh, to be who he is and uh, we also know that when God uh, God creates an oath, or he makes an oath, or he uh, proclaims a, an oath, a covenant, he says it's an everlasting. And sometimes we forget that God has made a, a covenant with us. But uh, uh, there's so much covenant that we have. The Old Testament has so many uh, covenants. And of course, uh, there are two covenants now, and while we should say major covenants, the old covenant and then a new covenant, which is from our Lord Jesus Christ, and we sometimes call it testament, and so uh, it's old and uh, new covenant. But God says that his covenant is also uh, something that we have to take seriously. The covenant that God has made is that he wants to save us. The purpose of God's covenant is that he wants our good intentions. He doesn't want us to just uh, be in this world and be tossed left and right by the devil, be tossed in and out and like on a river where on a sea or on an ocean where we don't know what to do. But God's purpose is that he wants us to enjoy the blessings of his covenant. So uh, we had, again, uh, some instances of what the blessings are. I remember also when, before God brought the Israelites out of uh, Egypt, he made uh, a provision. He spoke with uh, Prophet Moses and uh, encouraged him that, you know, uh, he's going to bring them out. He's going to do all of it. That was a covenant, and God did it. So the covenant that God has already revealed in the scriptures, it's so, there are so many of them. And we know the prophets also continued with the covenant. And they also proclaimed God's word to all those who will hear it, who will listen to it. And then God says uh, the covenant uh, is meant to help us all. So, all right, so let's uh, begin with a, a few here of what God uh, has said. Again, a covenant is an agreement in which um, both, sometimes the uh, one part is uh, greater, the, the greater part. For example, uh, in our case, as parents, we make a covenant that we are going to bring up our children uh, and take them to school and take care of them and do all. That's a covenant. But when God, uh, is because the, ch the child or children are unable to respond in a way uh, that they will understand what you are doing. But in the case of God, when he makes a covenant, he wants us to know. He wants us to know. He tells us. He puts it into writing and it's all documented that this is a covenant. And he says, I'm going to what, for example, when he, uh, he spoke to Father Abraham, he gave, it, he gave him that covenant and says, I'm going to bless you and you will be uh, able to have 
children, far, I mean, children everywhere. It will be worldwide. And then uh, we also look at it and say, well, did God fulfill that covenant? Yes, God fulfilled that covenant. And then he says, okay, we'll begin with Genesis uh, 20, just to help us understand what we are saying. Genesis 28, 13 to 15 says, And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father. You know, who is he talking to? He's talking to Jacob. Because when God first revealed himself to Father Abraham, he gave him a, you know, a covenant. And then he also did what? The covenant that he gave to Father Abraham, he also repeated it to Isaac. He also, from Isaac, then he repeated it. So it continued. It's a continuous uh, covenant. And so if God has given that covenant, he says, I am the Lord God, your father, and the God of Isaac. And so that's why we always say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or, or Israel. So we know that anytime we invoke that name, I am, you know, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. It means that we are, you know, tapping into that resources, taking the same blessings. So, um, again, and behold, the Lord God stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth and shall put spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. So God made a covenant with Jacob, letting him know that he is going to take care of him and guide him, and he's going to bring him back to the same place, and that where he is lying, he is going to be able to receive the blessing. So we know what God has said. All the commandments of God's word, the Ten Commandments, they are covenants. And God is telling us that do this, don't do that. They are covenant, and when you do them, you get blessings. There is a covenant of peace, covenant of health, covenant of safe, uh, of everything that we can think of. So, God's covenant goes far and above anything that we will say. And so, um, if we have to quote all the scriptural passages, there will be so much that there will not be time for us uh, to go through. We know that uh, King David, God made a covenant with him and said, you know, because you uh, love the Lord so much and you have a heart after God, how can God say that? It's because God knew or knows from how he has been dedicating himself, his life, that he wants to study God's word. Look at the Psalms. How many, uh, you know, was somebody, you know, most of the Psalms were written by King David because of what God had done uh, for him and he also wanted to relate to God and proclaim. And so, so many uh, passages reflect what God's covenant means for us. Uh, King David, uh, Isaiah also says that there is a, you know, a covenant God has uh, made and that he even calls us to come and be part of it. Joshua made a covenant with the Israelites when he was telling them that, oh, you guys, you can't save God. You, and they said, no, we will. they were making a covenant when they were talking with him. Joshua 24, uh, 24 uh, chapter, when he was telling them that, well, for him, he, uh, as for me and my house, and we are going to serve God, we are going to do God's will, but, you know, choose for yourself, you know, whom you will serve, but if you are going to just do things on your own, you know, so so many vows. Josiah, the king, King Asa, uh, Nehemiah, he also had a vow that he signed with a group of people who were dedicated to seven, uh, I mean, 
it's a whole lot of vows, and Ezra also made the same thing. And then what did Ruth do? Ruth, you know, she made a vow. She made a covenant that she's going to stick with her mom, or uh, should I say, uh, mother-in-law. And she was willing to sacrifice everything. And most time when people make a covenant, they are doing it because of the oath they have already signed. And the question is that, well, before we get to that, um, when God made a covenant with the Israelites all throughout the time, they didn't follow it. But then when uh, Prophet Jeremiah came around, he also said, well, uh, God is preparing for you a second covenant. So in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34, he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I you know, spoke with their fathers. Right, so let me read it from here. It says, 31, 34, and so on. 32, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, said the Lord. 33, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, said the Lord. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people and they shall teach no more every man or woman his neighbor and every man or, his, uh, or woman his brother or sister saying know the Lord for they shall all know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them said the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. So, uh, amen. So, again, I have a whole list of instances of God's covenant. In the New Testament, when the Lord Jesus Christ made the covenant, it was the covenant of the Passover that he celebrated with them and during that time he made uh, the covenant and encouraged them that they are to do it in remembrance of him so when we see the old covenant and the new covenant the whole idea is that are we keeping God's commandment what the question is that there are so many covenants God says worship me daily. The question is that are we worshipping God daily? God says, serve me in spirit and in truth. The question is that are we serving God in spirit and in truth? Are we keeping that covenant? God says, don't forsake the assembling. The question is that are we keeping to that commandment? God says, Pay your offerings. Pay your tithes. The question is, are we paying our tithes? God says, don't mix with the world. Don't go to their parties. Don't do their... The question is, are we obeying them? There are so many things that God has already said. Of course, when we look at the uh, contract or the covenant, the covenant consists of so many different ways. We also have talked about uh, the kings, the kings of Judah, Israel, and all. 
they made a covenant with other uh, kings, even Jacob. He made a covenant with, uh, with his father-in-law. So the question is, and they promised that, okay, let's make a, a pact, a covenant, uh, we are not going to cross over, we are not going to uh, do this. Have, it's all, the question is that, are we keeping the covenant? What other covenants do we have? God has said, when you need anything, when you really need it, what are you supposed to do? Fast and come before God with prayer, with supplication, and serve Him. God says, bear the fruit of the Spirit. The question is that, are we keeping to the fruit of the Spirit? God says, even, even uh, what we have been engaging, it is the Great Commission. God says, the Great Commission is that, go into all the world and preach the gospel to everyone whether they are black, green, red, doesn't matter. Whether they are in a place where you don't like to go, go and preach. This is not to say anything, uh, to, to make it look that I'm uh, being dramatic. Um, I went to somewhere near, you know, Fairfax, to a place where the young were all in a place. They were drinking, they were smoking, they were doing all of those things. And I went and there was a long line of people trying to get into the hall where they dance. So I went all the way to the back of it because the line is, I started, I went to the back and I started uh, talking to the young boys and girls and giving them uh, the invitation card, inviting them to church. And they were saying, what are you doing here? I said, I want to preach the gospel of Christ to you. God loves you. He said, no, 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 you know, no, God doesn't love you. No, no, you shouldn't come here. You, this is not. And I said, no, I want to be here. And they were lined up. They were about 50 lined up outside to get in. And apparently the place is already packed. Because what they do is that uh, all those who get in, because it's crowded, they don't want people to go in. So you have to wait until people who are inside, after they have danced, after they are tired, then they will leave. Then they will say, okay, two people go in again. So I went in there and I was giving and to the white, to the, and some of them said, oh no, you know, and they were dressed, oh, unfortunately. But I had to do something. And God says, go and preach to them. So I went and, you know, and a few of them uh, spoke to me and said, you know, ah, no, 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 why you shouldn't be here? Why are you giving this? Why? And I said, no, I want to invite you to church. I want you to come so that you can know Christ. And, and one of them said, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already a Christian. I said, okay, but I still, I'm inviting you. So, yes, we have to go to places where it's uncomfortable. But not to go there and to sit down and then, no, go there and do the work and then come out. 